All right, so Lincoln came over, and he just started talking at me about some parody movies. I don't even know how to like. I don't even know how to get started. I'm so amped right now. So I think we both just figured out that we have a love and hate relationship with parody movies. Okay, so parody movies in the last few years. I don't remember. I don't know what the last one you saw was. I definitely didn't see the most recent one that came I out. I haven't seen... I think Haunted House would be the most recent one I've seen. Same. There was a sequel to that one, wasn't there? Yeah, I've seen the sequel as well, and it I've wasn't seen, very good, so yeah. I'm not going to talk about that one. Okay. <laughs> so, I just remember parody movies throughout like the entirety of my life. Like, when I was a kid, they were a lot funnier just because I was a kid, and my sense of humor wasn't as mature. See, I just, I liked the older ones, and some of the newer ones my older brother made me watch. Yeah. Didn't like them as much. Yeah. <laughs> so even then, like, I knew it was stupid. I guess, like, what was funny about them is that... There's definitely a few new ones that are good, too. Eh. I mean, like... They're not as good. There was, there was a few I remember... What, what ones the, growing up did you like? The one I remember watching the most was Superhero Movie. <laughs> one of the worst ones. Yeah. <laughs> but the only reason... It, like, I, I tried re-watching it years later, because... I remember as a kid, it was it was funny, and I tried rewatching it years later, and it just sucked, and it was awful, and I hated every minute of it. But I remember as a kid, the only thing I really liked about it was that these movies, especially like the modern ones, they really they have such a a childish sense of humor. Like, it's, it's like all they, about poop jokes. Yeah. It's all about uh, sex jokes and boner jokes and all these other ridiculous jokes that it just makes for like little kids, especially like kids like me who are a little bit more sheltered. That like it's it's Just, oh, they edgy, said poop. you know. It's it's a little oh, it's a little funny. Like they're they're delving into like all the stuff I, you're not allowed to as a kid. Yeah, that's so the reason my older brother liked them so much. And I guess it's, it's like a sense of danger, you know. Yeah. And so it's a little bit funny. It's like it's kind of funny. What was the plot of superhero movie? If you could tell me. I swear to God. Because I can't remember it. It is basically almost shot for shot a remake of Spider Man. The, 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 the original two, like 2001 Spider-Man it's a shot for shot of that almost like it has this it has the, it's I mean like obviously it starts it starts off with Drake Bell and for some reason Drake Bell's in it no uh, way yeah he's the main character <laughs> I could not tell you that I remember this movie whatsoever but I remember Kevin Hart's it. in it too I as like that. his best friend I Leslie it. Nielsen's in it too as the Uncle Ben character this sounds amazing, but terrible at the same time. It literally starts with Drake Bell's character running at, to catch a bus. No, I do remember this, actually. Like, the first scene in Spider-Man. And then it's got the scene where they go to, like, this science this place. Is, and then a spider gets out. Or a dragonfly in the sense. Is it a dragonfly? Yeah, That's it's a dragonfly. That's absurdly retarded. And then, the, just, like, the whole movie after that is just this scene. It takes a scene from Spider-Man puts that scene into their movie and then just adds in stupid jokes to try and hide the fact that or try and try and convince you that they're parroting it or they're being smart about it in some way but they're literally just copying and pasting it and then just adding like some other image or some fart joke over it sounds amazing and another one i watched a lot i watched a lot of the scary movies those were good though those are the ones i think to this day, I think I could sit down. With, I watched, yeah, I watched I could, like the scary movie two or something over last Halloween, and I laughed. I didn't think it was bad. I mean, I think, I think it's, it's definitely not great. It's a film. I, they're films. I think I enjoy watching more with my friends. Because yeah, because you can make fun of them. Yeah, because you can be you can, more so. I feel like with the first scary movie, just because I feel like this first scary movie was a little bit more pure in it its form. Invented the horror parody before. Yeah, before it became super corporate. Like, it was already really corporate, but then it became, like, really corporate. I mean, there's, like, five of them out now. And I think the fourth one was the last okay-ish one, because I liked how they did the Saw and the Grudge, and they were, like, all the horror movies that I liked around that time. I mean, really, the fifth movie just shouldn't exist at all. I mean, I couldn't even tell you what the fifth one's about. I, I mean, can tell you what the first four are about. It's got one of the... It has the man, the guy actor, from, the like, from Scary Movie 3 to 4... You remember that guy? He was like the love interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in. He's in Scary Movie Five as like I guess one of the main actors. So at least they still kind of have him, and I think Charlie Sheen's in it. But I mean, he like could. they don't have the main actress who I thought was like Anna Faris. Yeah. She's now she's so doing funny. serious stuff. She's so funny though. I know. Now she's like, you know what? 
I started these four movies of scary movie. I'm gonna go do actual movies now. And I think that's what's like really, just as a small. That's when like, they should have just stopped it. I just as a small side aside here. Yeah. Anna Ferris is way too funny to have been typecast in those movies for so long. She got. How did she do that for so long? Her she just career, nodded her head and went. You know what? I, I, I mean, like, I'll or she was having fun. Dollars. Or she was having fun and enjoyed it. I think it. she was having fun with the first few films, and then it got to a point where. She grew up. <laughs> like, everybody was like, you know, we can't take you seriously. I'm sorry. You were in those films. We just can't do it. Then she had to do sort of pseudo versions of those films in, oh. wait, in waiting. And then she had to be in so many, like, terrible films, like Yogi Bear. I... No, she wasn't. She was in Yogi Bear. That's... Yeah. She had to really work her way up after that. I don't, I don't think she's going to make the recovery. I'm sorry. Anna I think Ferris she can. Is like, she's, she definitely is always going to be remembered as the girl from Scary Movie. Yeah, definitely. That's the, I think that's that's the downside, though. But anyway... But is that really terrible? I mean... I always, think Perry, of Mar- I always think of Marlon Wayans as the guy from Scary Movie, but he's done so much other stuff that... I mean, he's done a lot of parody stuff. Like he, All of the Wayans I, have. I, like, I actually, I kind of think of... He's, the old he's in the newest one, the which Marlin? is the Fifty Shades of Fifty oh, God, Shades of yeah. Black. He's in a lot of the. Mo- he's he's basically. I just think of him as the modern day Leslie Nelson, pretty much. Because just because he he's kind of the face that always pops up in these parody movies, mm-hmm. even if he's not really like associated with the parent company that deals with it, uh, he'll either get like some kind of reference or something. Just because yeah. he's in in many ways the father of modern day parody. And then movies. one of them is in that Jared Leto movie where they're doing heroin. What? <laughs> one of the Waynes is in that really serious movie. Is it the brother? It's not. It's Martin. one of them. I don't. There's there's like five. Golly, Wayans. yeah. But like, I don't know if you ever saw the old Waynes brother TV show. The like sitcom kind of. The color. Yeah. yeah. The what is that one called? I don't know, but I remember they had a Waynes brother TV show, and and the Jim Carrey was on it. And was the, he? Yeah. Was it like the SNL one? No, 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 no. no they not had the SNL one. That one was good. I don't know. I, I could be mis- I didn't watch a whole lot of it, so I could be mistaken. But from what I have seen of it, it actually looks more of like a parody of sitcoms. It's like a sitcom that's a parody of other sitcoms. Yeah. Uh, which I always felt was really interesting. Like, the Wayans Brothers have always just not even... There like- was the show called the Wayans Brothers Bros, which is what you're talking yes, about. Yes, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Um, there was In Living Color, which is their SNL skit show, which had Jim Carrey on it. Okay. And a bunch of other famous people came out of that. And what I was talking about earlier was Requiem for a Dream, which has, which has, it is Marlon Wayans. Mm. So he is in a very, very serious movie called Requiem for a Dream, where they're all like doing heroin, and it shows like their different paths in life after they do such things to themselves. Jesus. And he ends up in jail. So. He should be known for something like that, but you know him as the parody guy. <laughs> yeah, that's just... When they've done various movies and different logical oh, things. Yeah. I mean, he's done tons of TV shows and tons of other films, you know. Like, he's done some Netflix movies, he's done mm-hmm. some Netflix TV shows. Him and his family are just, they are all in fingers and all the kinds of pies, because they all produced it and stuff. It was more like... They all started in parody movies, and now they're returning to it with Fifty Shades of Black and whatnot. Yeah. But they all... It was more like they thought this was going to be their starter project, and they would get into more serious stuff, which they did. But those weren't as well-received, I think. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, a lot of his TV shows, a lot of those other movies he did, they just weren't as... Not that they weren't as well-received. Most of them were. It's just that... It's just that... It, it's kind of like with Christopher Reeve, how he did Superman for so many years and then tried to go into other stuff, but sometimes it just didn't, it just wouldn't work. He's just Superman now. That's just kind of how it works. But anyway, Robert Downey Jr. Same thing. Ro- same same thing. Yeah, like he, he can't basically he can't do anything other than Iron Man right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, regardless, parody movies for me, uh, I grew up with the terrible bad ones. ones. I grew up with all the bad ones, and then. Luckily for me, I had a dad who showed me all of the Mel Brooks. Yeah, luckily you had a dad that actually cared about all the good parody films. My dad just didn't care about parody films. Like, the only parody film my dad really cared about was The Naked Gun. Which is the best one. Which is the best one. That's the best one. The first Naked Gun beats almost every other parody movie except maybe Spaceballs. Oh, God, yeah. Or Blazing Saddles. Or Blazing Saddles. Basically, like, so the way I look at it is that in, in, in like the older eras 
Because I look at it like as a timeline. Like we live in the modern era. Which they're not like, very good. They're not very good. Haunted House is probably the best they're one. They're very well. uninspired. Yeah. There's no, they're very copy and paste. Oh, uh, it's just terrible. And then you've got the generation that kind of came before this, which is like, I kind of mark it up to being at like the, at like the, toward the end of 94, 95, up to maybe like the first scary movie, which is kind of like where I say it began. Like That's the, the modern, modern era. era. Yeah, That's where scary the modern movie. era begins. And so... Because then out of that, you get the other scary movies. Yeah. Epic and Disaster. Shriek, if you know what I did last Friday the 13th. That was the original name for it? No, that's a real, that's another movie. Oh, well, the original name for scary movie is, I know what you did last Halloween, some, like, when you Something screamed. ridiculous Yeah, like it that. was, like, literally a whole paragraph. And so, so then the second era, which... I kind of like the modern era I look at it as films that are extremely uninspired and films that more so just reference whatever was like the most popular films that were coming out at around mm-hmm. that time and then have like, a very satirical view of them y- yeah like kinda like it's it, like the way the modern era it's like a dark spin on it or has just a fart joke in it exactly like I remember in like the modern era like you have like there was epic or disaster movie and it has like a scene with Indiana Jones at the end of it mm-hmm. where it's like supposed to be a Kingdom of the Crystal Skull reference yeah and instead of Indiana Jones coming out it's like that black midget actor who's in like everything I know what you're saying he does he does like a lot of movies he's been in a lot of parody movies and he basically comes out and the joke all the joke is is he's a black midget instead of Indiana Jones Indiana Jones that's it that's the punchline that's the punchline what a good movie and that's that's terrible. That's basically what the modern era is going for. No, those ones are just a little bit dumber because then it's that's that's like the, that's like the overall like the disaster movie, epic movie. Those those are like the pinnacle. Those are the pinnacle of terrible. Yeah, so they, they 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 more Haunted so than House, everybody else. Haunted House it. is nowhere near that bad as the one, I, as that is one of the more modern good ones. Okay, I don't know, dude. Like, there's that scene where like he has sex with that doll. It's quite ridiculous, but and it's kind of it's laughable. It's kind of but then disturbing. she comes, but then she like goes, "Hey, what are you doing?" And he goes, "Back for later." It's not even like uh, a doll; it's like a stuffed animal. It's the Annabelle doll. Oh yeah, is that the first one? Yeah. There's like an entire scene where he just has. See, sex yeah, for with some it. reason, I thought it was a stuffed animal or something. I mean, like maybe they were using a stuffed animal like during it, but it's definitely supposed to be that doll. See, that's still not as bad as the Black Major joke. It's not. <laughs> it's not. You're right. You're, de- you're totally right. It's not. But you can't. But you can kind of see it's in the same realm. Yeah, but then there's the part where he's cutting up her arm and he goes tic tac toe bit. Hilarious. That way better than anything that's in any of the disaster. I'll films. give you this. I'll give you this. It's as time the- went on, Marlon Wayans was able to like hone his craft a little bit more. Yeah. And was able to like squeeze in actual funny jokes into some not funny scenarios yeah or like some typical uninspired scenarios that you would see in like some of those other like early on scary mm-hmm. movies or even some of those other movie movie films like yeah. Meet the Spartans or something like that that's terrible and actually interject some humor into them yeah when something like Meet the Spartans so in, in most of those funny. projects where there's like no Wayne's involvement whatsoever there's very little enjoyment to be found yeah in a Wayne's related project there's at least some enjoyment, I think. Yeah, because you're like, this is dumb. Yeah. But they're really good at being dumb. There's sometimes... In, like, I don't like the later scary movie films. Oh, uh, hold on a second. Before I continue that, I was going to go back into like the eras thing. Go on. Uh, so that's like the modern era, and that's like what the modern era embodies. But like the, the second era in the 90s and whatnot was more about like creating... It was just kind of like doing the bare minimum. It was kind of like the between of the old era, which was like good parody movies and like what they were doing right. The second era is kind of like strips away a lot of the charm, a lot of the ingenuity. Mm-hmm. Kind of just deals. They were dealing more with like flat scenarios. Like sometimes they would only pick one movie to parody, or maybe they it would, would be one movie for the whole time, but then they'd throw in jokes from other movies there and there. Exactly. Kind of like in Spaceballs, where it's definitely a parody on Star Wars. Yeah. But they throw in some Star Trek and Alien jokes in there. Yeah, and the reason it works on something like Spaceballs versus something like Spy Hard or something <laughs> like Repossessed is that with something like Spaceballs, it 
it, 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 it encompasses, I feel like, even though it kind of encompasses, like, yes, it's obviously a parody on Star Wars, I feel like it, encompass, it encompasses an entire genre. It does. It covers a it's lot a sci-fi. of the space films that were coming around out around that time. But something like Spy Hard or something like Repossessed, which kind of makes you feel like it's going for sort of like the ghost genre or mm-hmm. the spy genre, kind of just deals with one movie like repossess is just a parody on the exorcist and spy hard is kind of like a parody on die hard with some james bond elements in there and Shaun of the dead is Shaun of the dead is uh it's day of the dead it's like dawn of the dead there's one of those but any of any of enter uh, romero zombie like, film name but like you know how like in 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 something like those movies and like something like Shaun of the dead which is a great parody film it's a great it's modern part, it's what it's those are the modern parodies that are good. Yeah, it's, it's like the it's best. Three. It's one of the best of the modern era parodies. Mm. Uh, I think I like Hot Fuzz a little bit better. Oh god, Hot Fuzz is so good. But Shaun of the Dead is just a classic. And the reason something like Shaun of the Dead works is because it's a parody on the entirety of the zombie genre, which was huge around that time. It and you out. could pull anything. You could you could do anything, and they could pull anything into it, and any other joke worked in it because that's the thing it wasn't just jokes relating to zombies and fart jokes and other it wasn't a copy and paste of a different movie exactly it was its own movie with its own plot that's what I'm exactly that's what I'm trying to say like instead of being like taking Dawn of the Dead which was a remake that had just come out at around that time and just taking the the plot of that yeah was it yeah same year wow and then just taking the plot of that and then just yeah, carrying like if they it over. were in the mall, if they were in a mall, the entire exactly. movie, and they were doing the jokes like, oh, she had a pregnant, she's pregnant, she's a zombie baby's gonna come <sighs> exactly. out. They did it. They did exactly their own story. Repossessed from the nineties. I don't Leslie know what that one is. That's one of those. That's the one with the Exorcist. That's basically taking the plot of the Exorcist. Oh yeah, yeah. And then it's the same thing. With oh, superhero repossessed. Movie. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the same. It's like the plot. It's like the same thing with superhero movie. Repossessed did it. It's just taking the plot of another movie and then just adding stupid stuff into it. Because Hot Fuzz, they tell you all of the movies they're ripping off in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't do it in a copy and paste type of way. They do it in a way that they're like, we're fans of this, yeah. so we're making a reference of this. It's like an homage. Yeah. It's a, it's a clear difference between because there's a, a reference part, and yeah. an homage. Because there's like, say there's a scene in Disaster Movie or whatever where they copy and paste Iron Man into whatever. Oh god, yeah. Versus they talk about the movie uh, Point Break earlier in the movie. (laughs) And then they play out a scene from Point Break in like a comical (laughs) sense. That's that's like way better to me for some reason. That makes so much more like parody sense if you're gonna do something like a cop movie then just doing something like uh to literally like you run into the guys from point break and they're there and they play out the scene it's different and i think it worked a lot better and that's why the trilogy of the Shaun of the dead with hot fuzz and uh, world's end so much better with the references and, and something like spy hard or something like the scary it's the even movies. better than the scary movies yeah it's better than any of the movie movies it's better than any of the Wayne's movies. It's it's just it's a parody movie that's just done right. And when they hop over the fences and it falls over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love like in that movie, just like all the the way they make all the police work, like all the paperwork they have to do, like super yeah, action exactly. pad. Like, <laughs> I love the camera angle, like the I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to call the governor. And he calls the phone, and then he, he just pulls up right next to him in the swivel chair. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so funny. Hot Fuzz is such a great movie. Um, and then after the second, or like before the second era from the 90s, uh, from like 1994, I argue, like there were probably some parody movies I feel like that had come out uh, before this, like the producers. Uh, and this goes all the way back to like Mel Brooks and his era. Uh, but Some of I feel the best like ones as well. I feel like it all started in the seventies with Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles, which I would say that Hot Young Frankenstein is kind of along the lines of they copy and pasted a lot of that movie, but it worked back then because it, it was of, different. I because it's like, literally it is just the Frankenstein story. It is the Frankenstein story. It's just a parody story. version of it. I think what works with Young Frankenstein though versus like. A move versus like another movie, like again, I'm gonna say like Repossessed or something like Spy Hard. Is that it was the first one that did that? 
it, it was the first one that did that, but it did so with like you could tell with, with love charisma. and affection. Yeah. It, it did. It it was, and it wasn't just the first Frankenstein film out that came out. It was a lot of the universe. Because keep in mind, at the time this film had come out, there were only maybe one American released Frankenstein films, and they were owned by Universal. And those had come out during like the '30s and like '40s. Mm -hmm. And that, but they had left such a huge impact on the world and everybody that, and on people and like Gene alone, Wilder, and let alone the books. That had first started the craze of the movies. Yeah, and the only other Frankenstein films that were being made at around this time were made overseas in Britain mm -hmm. by Hammer. And so, by because of region coding, those movies didn't really come out. Uh, and, I mean, they still had, they had an impact, but not the way the Universal films did. At least not on the people that were making the Young Frankenstein Or the movie. people that were in America. Exactly. And so, with Young Frankenstein, it, it parodies everything. But it, but keep in mind, it is not just a repeat telling of the Frankenstein story. It, it adds its own stuff. And it, it's actually it's supposed to take place in modern times, mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be about uh, like the grandson or like yeah. the son of Frankenstein. Yeah, like but you could say, compared to other parody movies, it is the first one that really did the. Yeah, like it's like, something. It reenacts scenes, but it adds its own stuff. But it has another thing that the older movies did is they had the parody and they had their dumb jokes and stuff but they had a vision of what they were trying to make satirical yeah i'll take blazing saddles is easier to do than young frankenstein yeah because blazing saddles it shows it's a cynical way that everybody was being racist and they were their hero was a black guy that they were all like talking down to the entire movie and the sidekick was a white guy yeah the sidekick was a white guy which was a huge thing and to do in the 70s yeah. especially when people were getting mad that black people were on tv at the time can i just say that since now that we're in like the good era of parody films, Gene Wilder is the man. Gene Wilder is the king. He 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 sells it, man. I mean, Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles. Though there are parts in that movies where I'm just like, what is happening? Yeah. Like when they're in the fight in Blazing Saddles and they're just breaking through the different TV stations and stuff, and yeah. it's just not the movie anymore. Yeah. It just it just I don't I don't know what I'm looking at at that point. You know what's just my like really great about Young Frankenstein is that there are scenes that are funny, yes, and it is definitely a parody, but there are scenes in the movie that that you feel other emotions. You know, you feel you feel that there's anguish you, in some of the characters, you feel that there's sadness in some of them. And there's this one scene in there that I always think about with Gene Wilder and the monster where it's just a scene where Gene Wilder conveys such like conviction and like insanity and like like he's like he's literally going over the deep end and all this Frankenstein stuff and it's just like so passionate of a, like a weird monologue he has that it, that for me it, it just it sells something more than a comedy to me like when I watch Young Frankenstein I I feel like I'm getting more of a film and more of a movie than I would out of another parody film like, I don't know, like Scary Movie or something along those lines. Because it's just, it has so much more packed into it. It's just so great. It's so, I can't get over how amazing it is. All of the Mel, or Mel Brooks movies are great. And Spaceballs? God, what a great it, film. I remember the very first time I watched it and I didn't know it was a parody film yet and my dad was like, we're gonna watch Spaceballs tonight. <laughs> And I was like, it sounds great, because I didn't, like, I was so young that I didn't get that the name itself was a joke. Yeah. I just thought it was serious, like, that was a serious name. Yeah. Because at that point, like, Demolition Man and all of these crazy <laughs> names, I was just like, oh, these all just sound great. <laughs> Demolition Man's still terrible. Stop. <laughs> I'm going to say it in every video. No. <laughs> Anyways, back to, I remember the very first time, because I know I didn't know it was a parody movie yet, and the, the scene where the ship just goes on and on oh yeah and on for like 10 minutes so and I looked at my dad and I was like is this the whole movie is it broken is it broken <laughs> I remember literally like my brain couldn't comprehend that that was the joke of the like that was the first joke that you get and then the whole Star Wars thing that they do at the beginning because I had seen like Star Wars but I didn't get it yet yeah yeah because yeah. I had seen them and I was like oh it's cool they fight with lightsabers and whatnot and then I was trying to read all of the stuff and it was just like 
back in his mom and whatever like whatever the thing says is just yeah. ridiculous and i was like dad what is what is happening and this is this is broken obviously yeah and then it kept going and then it started like it was so funny now you know it's like i, I look at a lot of stuff something that spaceballs did i'm yogurt <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> I'm your cousin's roommate's younger brother's cousin, who helped you change your batteries in your remote controller one day. Whoa. So basically, we're nothing. Yes. Yes. The kind of stuff that a lot of the modern era parody movies try to do now, where they'll try and have it be like, uh, okay, so my Schwartz is bigger than your Schwartz. So, so, okay, so, like, for example, like, the vampires suck, right? Great movie. Stop. <laughs> Don't. It's so Shut good. <laughs> so, it's so bad. So, it's, so, the Bella character in that film is, okay, no, here's a better example. The, the actor they have that plays uh, Jacob in that film, okay. obviously supposed to be a parody on the Jacob from the actual Twilight yeah. films. All they do in that movie is to parody him, to parody his character, is just have his shirt be off all the time. Yeah, in every scene, instead of when he's supposed to have a shirt. And that he's always, like, glistening himself or something. He's always and he trying turns to make into a chihuahua nice. instead of a wolf. Yeah. Okay. That's not funny. It's, it's funnier if you just put like that Like, the setup it. is... Yeah. Like, the, like, I get it. The setup is funny. Like, instead of him transforming into, like, a, a super powerful, like, mean wolf or something... Yeah. He transforms into a little tiny chihuahua. But the but as soon as he does that, the joke is over. But in something like... like, like that's just a one-off joke. Yeah. Anytime he tries to do it after the fact, it just fails because everybody recognizes that it's lame. Yeah. Even in the context of the movie, characters are like, that sucks. Yeah. And it's so, in something like Spaceballs, you have the character that plays Darth Vader, play, the actor is Rick Moranis. Instead of being this, this Instead of deep, being booming, Samuel. hulking like, guy, yeah. it's this small, Instead of being short, Samuel Jones. nasally kind of guy. Yeah. But the joke c comes into play when you realize... He still has the same personality as Darth Vader. Yeah. He's still trying to come off at, like he's like the big hulking guy, but he's not. <laughs> comb the desert. <laughs> that one. That's what. That I one gets me, gets me every, every time. time. <laughs> but like that joke works because they're literally combing the desert, and it's a joke because that's a that's that would be what they would say. Exactly. Comb the desert. Comb the like desert. look for him. Gotcha, boss. How are you doing, straight comb? How about you want with the little bristles? Now, wait, you're a brush. Now there is now there was a film that came out in the old era after like a year after Spaceballs called Ricky One that nobody's ever heard of. Never seen that. Except maybe the only maybe time, my dad has seen this. The only time I know like a big YouTube person did this was once, and it was years ago, and it was like James Rolfe, and he only did it because he was in a competition with somebody else. So as far as I know, nobody else has any idea what this movie is. And basically all it is is it's parody on the Rocky films. Okay. Which is like interesting because those are like the Star Wars films. Yeah, those are big Those are big films that were coming out around the time. Yeah. And there were at least like four films that had come out by 88. So yeah. it, it, it felt right for the picking. The problem is that the film sucked. And that part of the reason the film sucked is because... And, and, he, and I want to bring this up because I want to be able to tell people what's the difference between something some somebody like Spaceballs and what it's doing versus something like Ricky One and what they're doing. For instance, there, there's a scene in Ricky One where he's like fighting the guy. It's like the it's like the last fight scene. It's like the big fight scene at the end of the movie, and they're throwing in like they're like they're like throwing at you all these puns and all these jokes, like trying to make you laugh desperately. They're saying like, oh my god, he's throwing a hook and a cross, another hook. And a cross, and he's and they cut the, to the fight, and he's literally throwing a hook and a cross. Why did this movie not? Why wasn't it successful? Because like it, I think because it doesn't give you enough time to let the jokes set in, and a lot of the jokes are just really on the nose, cringy. Like it's like Naked Gun. Like it's not really because, because there's a gun. scene where uh, he's in a hospital, and there's like 
a sign that says X-Ray, and then right below that it says Y-Ray. This sounds great. What's wrong? Oh Why didn't this God. do that? Don't do this to me. Like this sounds like Naked Gun to me for some Lincoln. reason. Don't do this No, to can me. we... We're going to have to make a separate video after this where oh Ricky Wan is actually the best no, parody movie no, and we discovered I, it. We'll, we'll, we'll look for it. We'll try to watch it. But it's kind of ridiculous. It like, sounds ridiculous. Like, there's a... Like, but that's the reason I like Naked Gun is because they just... There isn't, like... There is, they don't throw jokes at you. It's just you read something and it says something right below it that's just as dumb. I mean, there's a joke in Naked Gun I can think of where it's kind of like that in Ricky Wong where he's like, it's like Leslie Nielsen's character is, he's like, he meets his love, like the love of his life for the first yeah. time and he's talking to her and she's like handing, she's like on a ladder and she's like handing something to him uh -huh. and he's looking up at her and he says, nice beaver. And then she hands him a beaver. And she hands him a, like a taxidermy yeah, exactly, beaver. jokes like that. But it's but here's the thing. Here's why I think that's funny. is because they they make us, initially, they make us think he's talking about like her private parts or whatever. Yeah, he's looking up her skirt. And then he, like he, because the way they set up the shot is that it looks like he's looking up her shirt. And he says, nice beaver. Yeah. And we're like, oh my god, dude. Like, yeah, so why, why, why? And then she literally hands him a beaver. Or when he backs up into the all of the luggage that just got off the airport and he drags it all with him <laughs> <laughs> but like it's something like but like a naked gun they but both the jokes you've just told me from ricky one sound hilarious like if i was watching a boxing thing and he said he's throwing a hook and across and he's throwing those i think i would have laughed i think you would have to like see it to like understand like the setup and like how i'm trying to describe it but anyway modern movies I think have a distinct issue of feeling really dated just because of the fact that a lot of their references and a lot of the movies that they choose were basically just movies that like movies like I Know What You Did Last Summer like that's just a movie that was literally spawned because of the popularity of Scream mm -hmm. and in and of itself is a film that I feel is really dated it is really dated and then so making a parody on that movie in particular is going to leave you with an even more dated product. So every time I see Scary Movie, every single time I watch it, I'm like, man, this was a thing. This was like a all thing. this, like it's it's a it's like a perfect snapshot of a time period in time. And it's in some ways it's like really interesting. It is really interesting, but it doesn't work very well. But it doesn't work because, say for instance, like in these days, like like my dad and your dad, they can be like, you know what? You, you can watch The Naked Gun or Spaceballs, you know, yeah. the, the parody films, and you can watch those, and we can watch them, and we, we, we feel, we, we laugh, we feel great, because the films that they're parodying, timeless films, mm -hmm. and the parodies themselves, timeless parodies, like, they're done right, they're done well, and they've withheld the test of time exactly and and the, the films, newer ones don't the newer ones don't like except for the Shaun of the dead except for Shaun of the dead and, and the trilogy of that the trilogy that spawns from that and of course you know uh, but but films like any, any of the, of the scary movies any of the movie movies especially meet the spartans especially disaster movies